Welcome to Teachers Talking Teaching, where we talk about everything that elevates and celebrates what is great about teaching these days. I'm Tracy Bean, and I am here with my other Tracy friend. Hi, Tracy Guile, and we are excited to have a guest with us today. We are pleased to welcome Cody Kruger. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so the first thing that we like to ask our guests on our podcast, how did you get into teaching? What inspired you to want to be a teacher? Um, well, I I was never really on the teaching path. Like growing up, I never really thought that I was going to be a teacher. I was big into sports and still am big into sports. But my in my mind growing up, I always wanted to be like a professional baseball player or, you know, um, a coach or anything like that. So um, growing up all through high school, I wanted to be a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't till about like senior year of high school, maybe the second semester of senior year of high school, um, I changed and decided that I wanted to be um, a band director. I really liked my high school band director. And so um, I kind of shifted my focus at that point and then um, went to college. And um, it's kind of interesting when you are in music education in college, like about 90% of your um, schooling is for secondary education. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was still pretty strong in that I wanted to be a band director. I had focused it down that I wanted to be a middle school band director. Um, and then you have like one class, I had one class like my senior year that was elementary methods. And I was like, ah, so it's okay. And then when <laughs> I student taught, I, I was um, in high school first and then elementary school. So it was kind of funny that I wanted middle school, but I didn't have middle school placement. So I went into it and I started with high school first and they were a big uh, marching band school and I was not really into March band. I didn't like marching band at all, mm. but I ended up liking it. It was fun. We ended up winning state that year mm. and the whole experience was great. So I left um, high school um, student teaching thinking, oh, maybe I want to do high school. Um, and then I went and student taught in elementary school. And I just had an amazing teacher that I was placed with. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife ended up getting me um, paired with her because she was with her as a like a grad assistant growing up in a choir that she did. And I just had this great experience um, with her. And so um, I remember thinking this is really fun and that maybe this is what I want to do. And so then um, when I graduated, um, there's a lot more positions for elementary school than there are True. for middle school and high school. And so I remember applying for schools. I was like, oh, I have a better chance of doing elementary school just mm -hmm. for positions because I wanted to stay where I was and I didn't really want to move around. So, um, yeah, I ended up um, getting a job. It was kind of um, funny that um, going through the interview process, I, I interviewed and I remember I got a call that I got accepted to a school that was 40%. And I was like, yes, I have a job. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I have 40% position. And then it was like two minutes later, um, Tracy, you actually called me and offered <laughs> me a job at your right. school that was 40% as well. And I remember thinking like, yes, that's 80%. I'm good to go. <laughs> um, but they were on the same days. Oh, and so I asked you, I was like, is there any way you guys could work together and I could be opposite schedules? And you said, I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. And um, then I remember you called me back and said, um, how would you feel about just being 80% at our school? And um, and I loved it. And so that w it worked out really well. Um, and I've been teaching elementary music ever since. This is my 10th year teaching. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. went fast. It yeah. did. I know. I know. It went really fast. So are you happy with the decision that you landed at elementary? Do yeah. Do you have any, like, wonderings, like, what would it have been like to be in middle school? Um, or miss playing the tuba? No. <laughs> no, not anymore. I still play the tuba. Mm -hmm. um, I play in a brass quintet, but I, um, but I don't I don't miss it. Or I don't wish that I had done that now. I, I think for the first, um, like, three years or so, I kind of had that questioning. And mm -hmm. just because, like, for so long, I wanted to be a band director. And then... Um, I never really had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of like, I was wondering about that. And then, um, I don't know, I just realized I really loved what I was doing and it was mm -hmm. fun. And I feel like, um, you know, teaching elementary school, you get to be a kid every day. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that. So yeah, now I, I don't, I don't see myself doing 
you know, a different age at any point. So our goal with our podcast is to have a variety of people on that cover kind of the whole spectrum of what it means to be a teacher. And we wanted to make sure that we covered things like Mm -hmm. music. And so will you share with some of the other people who might be listening out there who are music teachers, like what is something that you're doing in your classroom that you feel like every music teacher should know about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I would say that I, I feel like um, mu- elementary music has a great opportunity for um, part of the day to be fun for the students. And so um, for me, I feel like um, the biggest goal for me when students leave elementary school is for them to have a, a joy and a, a passion for music, mm-hmm. that, that they remember when they leave that they love music, that um, they're not necessarily going to remember everything that they learned and the rhythms and whatever that I'm teaching them, but that I want them to enjoy music and want to continue doing it. So um, I would say the one thing that I try to include in my classroom is making um, learning fun. And I think that's a great opportunity for music as a, a specials in the day. This is a a special opportunity for them that is broken up from their regular schedule. Um, and so I would say that I always try to create opportunities for students to have fun. And um, I think that has always been like a strength that I feel like I have is I I still think like a kid. So when I'm lesson planning, I know I I want to create an opportunity for them to have fun. So I think that is one thing that um, I think music teachers sometimes can get bogged down in um, teaching the, you know, the rhythms and Mm -hmm. and the proper technique that we forget that that can also be taught while having fun. Um, And then also right now we're teaching, um, we just started our programs. So um, we started that now. And I think creating that opportunity for the students to perform Mm -hmm. is, is a huge deal. And so, you know, with everything that's happened, the students haven't been able to do that for Mm -hmm. three years. Like the, the students where I was trying to review with them and showing like videos of years past and like second graders have never done it. And so it's like, it's brand new. And that would be something that I would do for kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Um, And while that is like a stressor to put on a big concert and it's a lot of organization, um, I really think it's, it's important to do for the students to have that opportunity. And really they, I mean, they build such memories from that. And uh, I think it's, it also provides opportunities for, specific students to shine Mm -hmm. you know like we do auditions and it's my favorite week of the entire year because there's always a surprise Mm -hmm. student that comes forward and um either they have a hidden talent or they're so much like they're so much funnier than you think they Mm -hmm. were you know and they Mm -hmm. they just get a chance to shine so you get to see them in a different light yeah um and so as a specials teacher i think that is a neat opportunity whether it's music art pe or Mm -hmm. um, technology that students are going to find their their place in one of those four. They're going to find their comfort in that. And um, so I try to provide opportunities for students if that is their, if music is their spot that they're going to love and shine to provide opportunities for them to to shine in that or to make it fun so they enjoy Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. On that note, you've talked about performance and we know that that's kind of one of the standards you have to reach. Mm -hmm. And so how do you, how do you assess that without killing their confidence in the yeah. process mm-hmm. like i feel like that's um, the challenge you face is well it's getting really, everybody to participate right and then well, it's, also- it's tricky right like if i asked you guys to sing a song right now mm-hmm. like would you feel comfortable singing in front of people no like <laughs> some people maybe some people not not no. on the spot right, yeah. right. And so in music class a lot of times you know, not only are you, you're getting them to sing for like a concert in front of all their family members, but also in front of all their friends, you know, you do a school concert and, you know, by the end of it, you have some students up there singing a solo at a microphone in front of the entire student population and they're okay with it. Um, And so I think the, like the assessment of that is tricky because you want to assess how like how they're doing, can they sing on pitch or can they, um, you know, echo back to me what I sing to them, but also make them feel comfortable in doing it. Um, and so, yeah, that is tricky. 
I think it goes to how you approach it. So um, first and foremost, building relationships with the kids. If they if they're uncomfortable with you as their teacher or in that class, they're going to shut down. They're not going to want to do it. So um, building connections uh, with the students, you know, from the get go when you meet them. Um, I had a, a professor one time that told me like the quickest way to connect with someone is through humor. And so um, I always try again, it goes to maybe still being a kid myself, but um, I feel like I I have humor that students understand. I tell great dad jokes and <laughs> I think that they like that. Um, so you, you always have a joke outside your door. You know, I do. Like, yeah. And now I'm on vid video announcements. Yeah. So I have a joke of the week. Um, and that's kind of like now it's been like a, a thing like kids come up to me and tell me like I've got a joke for you. And the best part is that he explains the jokes because <laughs> Cody's now, you know, the music teacher at my yeah. school, uh -huh. so we see it and then he stopped explaining the jokes for a while and mm -hmm. the fifth graders were like, "No, that's the best part." You <laughs> Yeah, have well they to they told me the they said if you have to explain it, it's not funny. But Sometimes when you explain it, they're like, oh, now I get it. That is funny. That is funny. Uh, they just didn't want to admit that they didn't get exactly, it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And now that's been part of the whole, like, you know, spiel is like, oh, he's going he's to explain it yeah. now. Um, but yeah, I just feel like connecting with the kids and creating an environment that they feel comfortable in um, allows them to not even really think about what they're doing they're doing like mm -hmm. I'm not singing in front of my friends for them to judge me this is just part of the culture that we have in this classroom mm -hmm. um, and so it's part of our like our guidelines and our rules of being um, respectful being a good audience member that's another thing that we need to teach of so when students come up and perform like what is a good audience member look like and that being a good audience member makes them performing feel more comfortable mm -hmm. um, so I really think it's like building that that community in your classroom where they feel comfortable and then that way you can really see, assess what their true capabilities are. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, yes, it is tricky. And then also doing it like through games in the classroom where if they want to, you know, play the game, like the we have one where they come up and um, someone like closes their eyes in the front of the classroom and they have to guess who like stole the, the bone. We have this like dog song mm -hmm. and they steal the bone. Whoever steals the bone has to sing like, I have the bone. And that's part of the game. And they want to do it so bad, even though I'm assessing if they're singing the correct pitches when they're doing it. And so kind of like sneaking around on them yeah. that they don't even really know that I'm assessing them. Mm -hmm. And so, again, creating a fun environment where you can sneak in an assessment into a game or an activity mm -hmm. that they really want to do, I think is the best way to assess their true capabilities. Right. Yeah. So what's your favorite game that you play in one of your classes oh that's a hard one um <laughs> anything that i can be a part of I, <laughs> if i get to play as well um uh, we just did this one with fifth grade um it's this song from israel that they um it's also teaching foreign language which is pretty mm -hmm. fun and then um we have these tennis balls and we pass the tennis ball so we're passing it to the beat and then there's a person in the middle and um, we sing, we do this part that goes, yek do se lo obade, which means one, two, three, roll it away. And then whoever has the tennis ball rolls it to try and hit the person in the middle on their feet. So they're rolling the ball and the person in the middle is just jumping to try and avoid it. <laughs> and if they make it through the first round, they close their eyes and I add another another ball. So they, mm -hmm. they close their eyes. They don't know who has the ball. So as we pass it, we're kind of trying to hide it. Um, then we sing the song. And then um, we do it again. And if they make it through that time, I add like 20 balls. And, they, <laughs> and then we all just roll the ball. And I even have this like big kickball that I add, you know, I like bring it out and I put it on. So we pass it. It's the and musical then, version of dodgeball. It is. Yes, it is. And so I love that. I think it's so fun. Um, and I learned it because we have like a, a summer institute where we did like a game day. Mm -hmm. And every teacher brought in like their favorite game. And, um, oh, so fun. It's all these, you know, adults playing kids games and just having the time of their lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, oh man, that one's really fun. Nice. Yeah. We're, we're nothing if not good thieves when we're teaching. Right. Oh yeah. Right. That, that's oh, a yeah. common thing. Like find something else that mm -hmm. somebody does. It's amazing. And oh yeah. It's, it's smart. Like that's yeah. smart work. Yeah. I haven't invented anything myself. <laughs> I've just been smart enough to steal it from other people who are much yeah. smarter. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> One of the things in your classroom, Cody, is you have the kids play a lot of different instruments. So yeah. in some elementary music classes, it might be more um, vocal and singing. And you 
really try and have the kids explore a lot of different instruments. Where did yeah. that inspiration come from? Um, that's true. It actually came from when I was in elementary school. Um, it kind of goes back to when I said, you know, like you leave elementary school and you might not remember everything that you taught, but you're going to remember if like, if you loved music and like one memory that I have, like I can only think of like three memories from my elementary music was like one, we did a bean bag passing game where hot potato, where when it ended, you had to say like what composer it was and what the song was. Um, which is kind of funny. That's like a game assessment that we were talking about. And I remember it. Um, and then another one of them is I remember instrument day. Like we only had a, like one day a year that we brought mm. out the instruments and I wanted to play the xylophone so bad and I got the sandpaper blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember just standing next to the xylophone player and I had to play the sandpaper blocks and just be like, oh, you're so lucky. You know, like I just have the sandpaper. Um, and so I like, I just remember like wanting to play the instruments and I see that kids love playing the instruments. And I've been really blessed with um, both schools that I've been at has had a great selection of instruments that I can provide every student at one time playing an instrument or at least sharing with another student so we can all play the instruments. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think it, it came from m me witnessing how much students want to play, how much mm -hmm. I wanted to play, mm -hmm. um, and that it's an it's a fun part to include in every lesson. So, mm -hmm. I mean, at the beginning of the day, uh, we have an intro song that half the students play the instruments, half the students mm -hmm. um, sing and do a dance thing, and then we switch to the next class. So um, if they are not playing an instrument one class they're for sure playing it the next mm -hmm. and usually i bring out instruments for at least once in the lesson for everyone to use um i just i think that kids love to do it and so there's a lot of things that you can teach with singing moving and instruments and so i think just combine them all together you mm -hmm. A previous um, guest that we had on was Natalie Jacobson, and she was talking about behavior mm -hmm. and how you manage behaviors and stuff in your class. And I feel like specials teachers have that unique situation mm -hmm. because it, the kids aren't seated in desks. Mm -hmm. And so talk about um, how you manage behaviors in your classroom, because I think every yeah. teacher can benefit from learning the techniques specials teachers yeah. do. Uh, so I have like a three strike behavior management Um and the first one is a warning. So if the students are doing something they're not supposed to, even if it's just like talking to their neighbor or, you know, playing the instrument when they're not supposed to, the first one is a warning just to like tell them, like, I'm watching you. Like, it's OK. We all make mistakes. But, you know, warning, please correct your behavior. Um, and then the second one is I have um, an Australia chair that I got from the same um, cooperating teacher I did my student teaching with. Um, that is like the timeout chair. So if you get the second strike, mm -hmm. you've got to go to Australia and you sit in Australia. It's like the timeout chair. Um, and we read the book Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, mm -hmm. No Good, Very Bad Day. And if you have a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, you got to go to Australia. <laughs> um, and then they're in that for... No offense to people in no. Australia. No, no, I'm sure Australia is great. <laughs> it just comes from the book. Right? Um, they're, they're in Australia and then... Um, I've toyed around with a couple things when they're in Australia. One, like they fill out a refocus form. Um, two, like they're like turning the opposite way so they can't see what's going on. But I think the best is for them to see what's going on. So one, they're still learning what I'm teaching. If they do the refocus form, they're looking down. Maybe they're not, you know, taking in what I'm talking. So not only do they listen, hopefully, and, uh, you know, take in what I'm teaching, but also they're like, if we do something that they want to be a part of, they're like, ah, I want to get back into class. Um, and so I've worked with our PE teacher in our, in our school. We have like the same kind of set time where they sit out um, and then we invite them back in and they come back in and everything's good. Um, they're welcomed back in. And then if they get in trouble a third time, that's where we go into the school um, behavior plan. Um, but, uh, as far as like, like instruments are playing, I also have a behavior management of, I say, if you play it and the whole class responds, you lose it. So that's also kind of like their warning if they're, cause if you got an instrument in your hand, like you want to start playing yeah. it or making yeah. noise, it's really hard not to do that. So, um, that's another thing I teach right away is just this call and response of if, if I hear someone playing it, I'll say, if you play it and everyone says you lose it. And then the next time if they play it, I take it away. Um, but they only lose it until the next person loses it. So it's like, hey, you're not out forever. Mm -hmm. Just like wait till the next person. And it's funny because the kids will be like, I heard Joey. Joey played it, you know. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, yep, all right, Joey. Okay, you're back in. Um, and so it's kind of fun that they, even though it's like a punishment, I guess, like you lost your instrument, um, 
they're still like engaged and like okay who's gonna play it next yeah. um just because it's it's so tempting to play mm -hmm. it yeah um but yeah i think i think behavior management is is so important and um one thing i've learned is you've got to you got to be right on it if you let them slide on it um they're gonna continue to push the boundaries and as much as it's difficult sometimes to um you know give a kid a warning right away mm -hmm. um i think you have to just because they're going to start pushing you and you have to be the same with um, students who get a warning every class and a student who's never got a warning before because students are witnessing what you're doing and if they're going to push you as far as um, they can to get away with anything. So um, I think that's the hardest part is just staying true to the behavior management plan that you set up mm -hmm. and as difficult as it may be because I don't know, I don't, I don't like conflict. I don't like upsetting people and that goes with students as well. But mm -hmm just you've got to to keep the structure mm -hmm. in your classroom yeah. yeah and that's something you do a great job with is the consistency like i see and and consistency and an opportunity to reset like because oh, you're thanks. never out for for very long right not participating for very long and right so, and without that i can't even imagine how loud music class would be <laughs> if it were just free reign like, right yeah. play whatever you want whenever you right want. you know you have to have some level of structure and routine and right. consistency otherwise you would be deaf probably <laughs> yes at the end of the day. it's so yeah. true well and it also goes like like we have dance parties as a reward mm -hmm. sometimes and um, kids are always like, let's just do a dance party. And if you just played music and let mm -hmm. them dance, I mean, they would be tearing things off the wall, <laughs> throwing instruments. And so I always have some sort of dance party mm -hmm. like activity. So like freeze dance. Right. So if I pause it every now and then, they have to freeze. Mm -hmm. And then I play it again and they go, or like uh, four corners, I pause it, they go into a corner. Um, and then I color the corners. And if you pull out the color that they're in, they're out. And you make a little fun game of it. But yeah, it's like, it could go, it could be sheer chaos if you don't <laughs> if you don't have some sort of structure to it yeah yeah so you talked about um going to summer institute and being mm -hmm. to learn with other educators what are you looking forward to learning more about what are you hoping to to grow oh that's a good question um i think just the again the sharing of ideas i think is really important of what each teacher has learned throughout the year mm -hmm. Um, cause everyone's going to be learning something else and there's something different. And so when you come together and you have this great bank of ideas that everyone learned throughout the year, you're really growing as a teacher yourself. Um, and so I love just that idea of, you know, sharing of what like great lessons mm -hmm. or just what has happened throughout the year of here's what's worked for me. Here's what's not worked. Mm -hmm. And just having that open communication because we're like, uh, I think it's difficult as a music teacher in elementary school because you're the only one. Right. You're kind of on an island and all of your colleagues are at different schools mm -hmm. where if you're a first grade teacher, you've got colleagues that you can go to, you know, when your students are out at recess, like, what are we doing next? Or like, can you help me with this? This lesson didn't go well. And as a music teacher, you don't have that. And so um, not only like Summer Institute, but like our monthly meetings of getting together mm -hmm. and sharing just kind of the ideas and like failures what hasn't worked because we're all teaching similar concepts mm -hmm. and what has not worked and what mm -hmm. has worked so just having a bank of ideas from everyone i think is really helpful so on that note of collaboration i have appreciated you being at our school because you and i have been able to collaborate doing guitar right. and ukulele before school um, and being able to provide enrichment opportunities for our, our um, students. And that's been awesome because before you were our music teacher, I did it more or less by myself. And so right. talk about to some of the other opportunities you like to provide for kids outside of your classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Guitar Club has been great. Um, I think that, that that's been something that I've been blessed with that I um, have always had someone to collaborate with on guitar. In my previous um, school, we had a great um, a parent leader that came in and helped teach the guitar. And um, I think that's, it's awesome to have that just also for the students to see how teachers collaborate together and how students are supposed to work together as well. Um, but other opportunities we have, um, I have a guitar or a, a choir that um, we do before school um, for the fourth and fifth graders um, that want to be a part of it. Um, I think that's uh a pretty fun opportunity for them to be a part of. And also, you know, we like to do a, a concert, like we did a guitar 
concert, mm-hmm. but it's only for, you know, the fifth graders. And so they see that and choir is only for fourth and fifth grade. So when you're in third grade, you're like, oh man, next year <laughs> I have all these opportunities. Um, so that's some oppor- some other ones we do. We did like a ukulele, you and I did a ukulele club as well. Um, um, but yeah, that's about um, all the extracurricular ones. When we do, like we had a fifth grade musical that we did, we would have extra groups that if they wanted to be part of like a a dance part of it, they would come before and after school Pre-COVID. and do that pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, extra opportunities for them like guitar, choir, ukulele. It's another way to provide opportunities for students who, um, things that they're not necessarily going to get in the classroom and that you can kind of take further um, before or after school with those clubs. Yeah, I think the bonus of those as well as just your music program in general is some of those kids who aren't as successful academically Mm -hmm. have another avenue to get hooked into school to get excited about to show that they they have a a special skill yeah that um yeah just it gives them more self-confidence yeah well it's it's so fun and they get like so um involved in it you know i love i love when i get like a contact from a parent that was like oh my student told me about um you know, the concert coming up or I heard my kids singing the program songs or, you know, like this last week I had, we did auditions in class and one student wasn't, you know, happy with how his audition went. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, he went home and talked to his parents and, you know, said, can I want to try it again? You know, so just that like, mm-hmm. you know, they're getting excited about it and want to come in before school. They wanted to come at 730 mm-hmm. and our bell doesn't ring till what, 8? 40 or 845 yeah. <laughs> like it's a little early but yeah they're just you know they just get so tied into it and i i love that it means that you know i'm doing a good job it means that they're mm-hmm. excited about it yeah and i love that both of you provide that before school or after school opportunity because particularly my generation like the kids who um knew how to play the instrument they mm-hmm. were taking private lessons for the most part right like, you know, parents who couldn't afford music lessons, their kids weren't getting exposed and getting the opportunities to learn to play an right. instrument. So having that as a as an enrichment activity yeah. that's open to anybody is such a it's great free. thing mm-hmm. for kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another thing that um, that I've really enjoyed is I I, li- I leave room in the each class for if students come in and they want to perform in class. Mm-hmm. So students who want to perform a song they've been taking lessons maybe in piano they come in and my rule is if they bring in their music they can do the performance and so as we talked about like a little before it also teaches the students um audience behavior and what you know how they're supposed to behave um and i've just i've especially seen that um in this school that we're at now the students come in all the time wanting to perform Mm -hmm. um and sometimes i have to be like oh we don't have time for three (laughs) three performances today but i love that they want to do that and so i just you know it kills me to be like no we don't have time for that we've got to we've got a lot of things we have to learn today so i think in the big scheme that's more important yeah Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you being here today, Cody, yeah. and thanks for sharing your expertise as a music educator with us. Absolutely. We both get to benefit from seeing the kids and how excited they are to go to music mm-hmm. class. Well, thank you. Well, I feel lucky mm-hmm. to have been able to work with both of you guys. And <laughs> um, honestly, um, I feel it's an honor to be here. So thank you for asking me. Yeah. So we like to finish mm-hmm. with our guests each time talking about the chocolate barometer. And it came from at Tracy's school that she was the principal of. They had a drawer with a bunch of chocolate candy mm-hmm. in it. And depending on how depleted it was at the end of the week was how rough of a week it was. Mm-hmm. So our chocolate barometer is 1 to 10. 10 is rough week. I needed a lot okay. of chocolate to get mm-hmm. through. One, I only needed one or two. So how was your week on the chocolate barometer? Um, well, first off, before I answer that, um, I was at the same school that did the, the uh, chocolate yeah, barometer, right. and I took full advantage of the chocolate <laughs> drawer, but I was unaware that there was like a gauge of how the week was going. Um, wow. At so, the end of the week, we'd look in there and go, uh, <laughs> Cody yeah. has been here a lot. Um, so when I first heard you guys talk about that, it was like, whoa, I didn't even know. Um, but I think it's brilliant. I think it's such a, a neat idea. Um my, I'm going to answer it in two parts. So my chocolate barometer, um, as far as my energy level, I would say was probably like a seven. I needed some chocolate this week. Um, just going through, we had like the auditions that I talked about. It's just a lot because it's like kids are coming before school. They're doing it during class. They're coming and getting me at lunch. They're wanting to get to me after school. Uh, we started choir back up this 
this week. And so our first choir rehearsal, we had an assembly. So maybe it's like a nine. Maybe it's more than I thought. <laughs> we had our first assembly yeah. in like a long time this week. Um, and so we had to DJ it. Yeah, I was a DJ. I had a sweet hat and like it was spirit week. And then I have a practicum student coming. So his first day was at assembly day. So man, we keep hiking <laughs> oh, it up there. Maybe it's a 10. It was a lot of, <laughs> yeah. um, but as far as like, um, um, with the students, I'd say it was like a like a two because it was really great. Like we talked about before, it's fun to see the students in that light of auditioning, and um, it's great to teach like a practicum student coming from a university. Um, and it's also fun to see the kids' reaction at an assembly. Um, they were just so pumped up. I think it was because my sweet DJ music that I did <laughs> for sure. Uh, uh, definitely. Uh, for sure. Um, what was the favorite song? Um, well, we, they came in dressed up in this, um, all these like, you know, wigs and stuff and they pumped up and we had Rocky going. So oh. they came bump, bump, but it dum but it dum <laughs> I like that. And then they were dancing and we got their attention. I played, I can make your hands clap. And then oh. everyone went, <laughs> nice. I thought that was That's pretty good. And then when they were exiting, favorite. I had a, um, a smooth song from Encanto, which, you know, is a big deal right now. So I, I think I nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're available for all sorts yeah. of assemblies. Yeah, three songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll put Cody's contact information in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Available yeah. for hire. If you That's like those right. three songs, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. it was a hit. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Tracy? What was your week on the chocolate barometer? Um, I'm going to say that it was probably like a three my kids are getting the hang of things mm -hmm. hanging in there fairly normal week wasn't too bad so how about your week yeah same i would say probably in probably a two it was pretty um mostly light week all around so yeah it just feels like um got kids you know been in school for a while they're starting to really you know get the routines they're you know, fewer absences, like mm -hmm. all of those are good things. You Spring know. break. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Overall, yeah. Overall, good week. Huh. Yeah. So we like to also talk about top tweets of the week. So mm -hmm. um, my tweet for this week is actually related to Cody's. My kids had earned a party. Oh. And they get to vote. And it's all based on their behavior. They get, they get pause from their uh, specials teachers mm -hmm. if they had good behavior. And then I give them potentially a paw for the day. And once they get 50, they get to have a party. Mm -hmm. And uh, they voted and they wanted to have a karaoke party oh, because we have this new sound system in our classrooms oh, with a microphone, like a yes, handheld yes. microphone. And I wasn't sure how that would go. And they embraced, it was amazing. I just had a sign, I did a you know, sign up sheet, really fancy notebook. Uh, kids put their name down or mm -hmm. their group's name down, signed up for their song. Mm -hmm. We sang, mm -hmm. we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> We, uh, you know, Rick rolled the, oh, the whole class, did a Rick <laughs> Astley Rick roll. Nice. Uh, I had one kid who, you know, you say we were talking about um, kids who can step up. And I had a kid stand up and sing uh, Eye of the Tiger as a so like did it by himself. Mm -hmm. Most of the kids came up in groups, mm -hmm. but he did it by himself. So it was just it was really fun. Like they handled it well. They had fun with it. And it was it was a great laugh. So nice. Yeah. So. So my top tweet of the week actually involves Cody's wife. So oh. <laughs> I know your wife is in the aspiring administrator. She cohort, is. Yes. And we had a session this past week and we talked about um, really establishing and moving that transition from being a teacher and into more of a leadership or administrative mm -hmm. role and how you start to tell your leadership story. So that was the focus of our admin cohort of of really getting teachers to think about like all day long you lead mm -hmm. like you might be leading on your team you might be leading a book study you might be leading a professional development like there's all sorts of leadership that's happening and just being more attuned to that and being able to convey that as you're moving into maybe a leadership role hmm. and are you reading a book with that group too and yes actually the book is 50 questions for aspiring administrators by um, um, the last name of the author is Kafale, and it's really fantastic. It's 50 questions that every administrator who wants to become a principal or a district leader should be thinking about processing um, and, and trying on to see, is this a good fit for me? So hopefully your, 
your wife decides that maybe she'll be an aspiring administrator. Yeah. I will say she she was pretty jazzed about um, this uh, the, the class when she came home. She thought it was a great one. She was pretty excited about it. So, um, yeah, that'd probably be her top tweet as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. So do you tweet, Cody? Are you on um, Twitter? I, d I do not tweet. I had to do it for um, my master's. I got a master's um, the la last year from, um, and they are for um, movement in the classroom. Basically, is what it is. And so they um, they made us do Twitter for that. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't have any. I didn't know what to do. But I found that it was a great <laughs> resource because yeah. you you start following a bunch of teachers and you get some great ideas from them. Um, but I don't I don't tweet very often. No. Uh. Um, but I would You're say with choir and a sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. I use it to get ideas from everyone else. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Use, I don't put anything out that I do. Um, but I would say I loved seeing your um, your My students class. doing the karaoke. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's fun for me. It's great to see that something they choose is is musical. That's pretty great. Um, I also get a little worried that then the teachers are like, "Man, they're not singing very good." Our music. <laughs> I'm not sure about our music teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I had a teacher come up to me and said that, you know, man, my students are not very good at singing. We're doing this like lineup song and they can't sing the right note at all. <laughs> and then I sang with them. They did just fine. So I think it was her. <laughs> She's not singing on the right note. That's what it is. Really out of tune. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if I'm gathering this right, my top tweet would be like something good that happened. I would yeah. tweet out. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, Recently, I went to a music educators conference, and one of the um, clinics that we went to was on nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. And so I did this whole lesson without talking, and I did it with kindergartners, which is really difficult. So I like I brought out you like a buck. Yeah, I know, I know. And I like I put my learning targets on the board, and I had them read, and I didn't even read it that we were going to be talking or communicating without talking. Um, and so like I would bring out, we'd sit in a circle and I would bring out, um, like a thing of, of shakers. So I brought out this mm -hmm. thing of shakers and I would really act it up. Like I remember watching the, the clinic and thinking he's basically like a Pixar short film because, you know, they don't talk <laughs> sure. in Pixar, but they're telling the whole story. Yeah. So I really put on my acting hat and I brought it out and I was like trying to teach throughout, you know, without talking. So like I would pull out the shaker and I would like, you know put it back in and then I'd pass it to the next kid and have them try to take it over. and they played it I'd like make a noise like oh you know and then I'd take it back and show them um and the beauty of being a specialist teacher is you get at least three tries at each lesson because you have day one <laughs> day two day three and day one was like Ooh, that was a little tough and then day two and three was a lot better and I just I thought it was really neat we have one student who is nonverbal. um and I think that's the beauty of our school is we have a lot of inclusion um, with all the students in. And um, I think my top tweet would be that um, you don't have to speak through words to communicate. And so even a student who was nonverbal got it so well. I, I remember I passed the bucket to um, her and she just grabbed it and passed it. And I was like, I remember looking like there's got to be another adult in the room. Like that was great, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, I thought that was really special. Oh, yeah moment yeah, yeah that was really cool nice nice well thank you again cody for yeah, yes. being with us on teachers talking teachers absolutely yeah thanks Thank for you. having me yeah. we appreciate you joining us today on teachers talking teaching we look forward to sharing more content with you in the coming weeks please like or subscribe on our youtube channel and other podcasting channels